Welcome to Module 3. In Module 3, we're going to be talking about creating learning progressions for your unpacked standards. And the foundational text we're going to use to guide us is James Popham's Transformative Assessment. We're going to specifically look at Chapter 2, Frameworks for Formative Assessment. This is a book that I found highly readable and very valuable for my work in the classroom, and I really recommend that you purchase that if you're so inclined. So in this chapter, Popham goes over four steps to creating a learning progression. The first step is to acquire an understanding of the learning goal. And I think one of the things that really struck me here was in step one you operationalize the learning goal. And he had a really nice statement that I found very handy. If the student can do blank, they have mastered blank. So you ask yourself, what is the student going to do to show me that they know or can do what the learning target's asking them? In step two, you take that learning target and you break it into sub-skills or bodies of enabling knowledge. Uh, as far as what that means, there is a glossary here that can give you uh, the definitions of that in the presentation. I think the important thing here was um, it's Building blocks are going to be things that are so crucial to mastering the learning target that if they cannot do it, or if they don't understand it, the learning goal is not going to be mastered. So this is a nice way to sort through um, maybe things that would be nice to know but aren't crucial for them to know. So here are a couple examples of learning goals with enabling knowledge and sub-skills. Step three is to determine the measurability of each block. Um, I think the key statement here is when he says um, analyzing these sub-skills or these knowledge, enabling knowledge, gives you a better understanding of this skill or body of enabling knowledge. So sometimes I know in the past I would just assume I knew what that skill looked like or, and I didn't think much about how I was going to measure it. And then when students would actually work on it, it would dawn on me, I don't really understand what this is. Some examples of some measurable verbs and some unmeasurable ones. And the key thing here is most Bloom's taxonomy verbs are going to be measurable. So step four is to arrange all of this into a sensible sequence. Key thing here is um, allowing time for assessment. And uh, if something is going to take longer to assess, that might influence the order of yes. where you put it in your instruction. Yes. 